Though you might not expect it, baseball is far and away the most popular sport in Japan, with 48% of people surveyed calling it their favorite back in 2018, with soccer and sumo wrestling each polling at almost half that. So with that knowledge, it's not surprising to find a surplus of baseball manga as well as anime, Major, Major Second, Ace of Diamond, Touch, Mix, Big Windup, Star of Giants, Cinderella 9, Princess 9, and many, many others. Given the sheer ubiquity of the sport, it can also pop up in series that have nothing to do with baseball, and those instances are what I want to talk about and how they're used in each series. This is by no means a comprehensive list, I've just been suffering from sports withdrawal and this is me coping. If you like this and want to see more, let me know your favorite example of baseball in non-baseball anime or manga down in the comments. I'm going to start with the most normal example, normal being relative here considering this is still coming from a series that features a talking octopus monster as a teacher, and in this episode, impromptu baseball coach as well. But the students here are the ones actually playing, and while they are far from your average middle schooler, their abilities and tactics are more typical than what we'll be seeing in our other two examples. Assassination Classroom's baseball game comes in the form of an ideological battle, like we often see in the series, with E-Class being pitted in an exhibition game against the heavy favorites of A-Class. In the past, this game always served as one of the many humiliation tactics employed by Principal Asano in order to further subjugate E-Class, as well as make an example out of them to keep the rest of the school in line. A textbook othering tactic. So the question becomes, can E-Class formulate a strategy and effectively moneyball the hell out of this one match? A part of their solution is to essentially strength train with Koro Sensei's speed so that the pitches in game will be easier to hit in comparison. But the other part is to lean more heavily on the psychological nature of baseball as a game. I'm not going to be scoring each of these shows against each other in terms of how well they portray baseball, because they all do things different with the sport, but Assassination Classroom is definitely the one where the mental side comes into play the most. Since the only one with any real experience is Tsukino, they compensate by rattling Shindo, A-Class's star pitcher, with bunt after bunt in the first inning. It's effective not only because they're able to get on base, but because it takes away the strength that gives Shindo his confidence. So then when Tsukino comes up to bat, telegraphing a bunt, the fade to showing him with his anti-Koro sensei knife and gun holds more meaning than just reminding us he has nerves of steel. Shindo knows Tsukino is talented, which makes him all the more uncertain. Baseball games are won and lost in moments like these, a mental battle between one player on each side of the ball, and Assassination Classroom captures this sensation perfectly. But while Shindo is certifiably shook, the game isn't over as Principal Asano takes over coaching duties for A-Class, instilling them with an almost zombie-like methodology of superiority in order to save the game. They rally back and then employ some questionably legal tactics to counter the bunch strategy, in effect trying to pull the game back to a purely skill-based level. However, E-Class, in the bottom of the last inning with the lead, turned the psychological aspect back up to 11 by exploiting the same extreme infield strategy to the point where they'd be violating social distancing guidelines. In this instance, they're taking advantage of the umpire's favoritism towards A-Class in the previous innings, rattling Shindo once again by laying into their stronger mental chops as assassins and putting their lives on the line. They win out in this battle of wills, ending the game in a triple play thanks to a poor swing from Shindo. Assassination Classroom's baseball episode is just one of many motifs the series uses to explore its messages of classism and worthiness in society, but I really like how it's used here in particular. While in any sport there are going to be momentum shifts and mental elements, baseball always only has so many moving parts at once. A few missed swings or poor hits and suddenly everything can change, with those decisions resting on only a few players at a time. And that element ends up pairing perfectly with Ass Class's brand of intensity. But at the same time, baseball is still a team sport, and it's important for everyone to be supported so that when it's their time to step up to the plate and make those game-changing plays, they don't shoulder all that burden alone. Which is another key message of the series, so I love seeing that angle as well, even if it wasn't explicitly stated in the episode. Alright, so this is where things start to get properly weird, which, it's Doro Hey Doro, like everything else in the world of this show, baseball is anything but normal. Dead sorcerer decorations, giant bug batters, and a bottomless pit between second and third? Let's play ball. Like many other developments in the series, this game is dropped into our laps out of nowhere as Fujita stumbles across an advertisement for the match and sees an opportunity for his revenge against Kamen. This sets up one of the main themes of the baseball game, sports as a potential outlet for negative emotions. 
However, it isn't only Fujita that this applies to. We also see Kamen dealing with feelings of jealousy after watching 13 flirt with Nikaido. With that setup, we're also given one additional piece of baseball paraphernalia that Ass Class didn't feature in the form of a mascot for the Peace Sharks played by Ebisu. And while it doesn't factor into the game directly, the mascot adds a valuable edge of fun that is a key aspect of sports. <laughs> Come on, there's no way that didn't make you grin at least a little. The game itself is also not without fun moments though, with that single coming into play, or Johnson stealing two bases at once, something which is technically legal and has happened in real life on a number of occasions. But this is still Doro Hedoro, which means underhanded tactics are also at play, with the opposing coach drugging two of the Central Worms players and attempting to kill Johnson with insecticide. And the most consistent cheating comes from none other than Fujita on the pitcher's mound, who uses his magic to give his throws some extra oomph. I can't help but feel that in a different series, this proficiency might have led to some reflection on what things could have been like for Fujita, that this might have developed into a passion were things not the way they are. But instead, there isn't even an inkling of these thoughts, reinforcing the fact that relations between the sorcerer's world and Hole are already beyond repair, at least in the minds of our characters. Because the same can be said for the other side too, with Professor Kusakabe reanimating the corpse of Matsumura, Fujita's dead friend, seemingly without any hesitation just to fill a roster spot. <laughs> This absence of respect or empathy from either party speaks volumes as it leads to the game deteriorating when Fujita attempts to beam Nikaido with his crazy fastball out of anger. But before we get to that climax, it's worth talking about her, and more specifically that aforementioned jealousy Kamen was experiencing. Initially, he channels those emotions into his swing, knocking it out of the park and extending his team's lead. It's a direct, physical catharsis. But as the game goes on, we see examples of their teamwork at play, with Nikaido the pitcher and Kamen the catcher. Now by this point in the series, we've already seen them work well together many times over, but we're subtly shown why that is. There's an unspoken trust between the duo, as shown by Kamen believing in Nikaido's pitching and batting skills while also having her back when needed. Contrast this with 13, who is encouraging but also concerned because his relationship with her is still very much at a superficial level. Sports have a way of showcasing this intangible bond, so I love seeing that aspect getting underlined for Nikaido and Kamen, as brief as this game is. Plus, the fact that he speaks to 13 about having confidence in her while eating her gyoza is a nice touch. Now back to that pitch. Nikaido lets it rip, wielding her baseball bat like it's a combat knife, and nearly kills a man because the ball had enough velocity and rotation to tear straight through the glove of the coach fielding it. Never change, Dorohedoro. But sadly, these antics can't last forever, as this injury causes the game to stop, giving Fujita and Ebisu the chance to escape with the corpse of their fellow sorcerer. Nothing is ever stagnant in this series, so it's only natural we wouldn't get an entirely fleshed out baseball game as much as I'd love to see that. Strike three! You're out! I saved BNA for last because it offers the most complete sports story of these three. Whereas Doro Hey Doro only covers a single game that's cut short, and in Assassination Classroom its one game is only three innings, BNA shows us the progression of an entire season in its baseball episode, as fast paced as that may feel for a 22 minute outing. Still, the amount of story and development they pack in is pretty impressive, complemented by some excellent animation that everyone has come to expect from Studio Trigger. Their staff's extreme exaggeration of Michiru's moves in particular, with her ability to morph her body, lend well this episode to the absurdity of her being recruited to play for the Bears mid-game. Those are easily some of the highlights of these matches, watching her whip out animal power after animal power to make increasingly ridiculous plays. Some of her moves remind me of ones in MLB The Bigs, an arcade baseball game my brother and I used to play back in the day. Needless to say, Michiru is the reason their fortunes turn around, as she handles everything from pitching, to hitting home runs, to preventing opponents from hitting them. They continue to pile up wins as the underdogs, or I guess, underbears, much to the chagrin of the people behind the scenes who want to rig the games for the sake of their gambling operation. This plays into largely what separates BNA's baseball story from the others I've talked about so far. Everything in this episode is inextricably linked to the sport. 
And while yes, there are still allusions to the larger themes present in BNA, as shown by the very clear discrimination allegories, there is still the sensation that baseball takes priority here compared to its roles in Doro Hey Doro and to a lesser extent in Assassination Classroom. The latter still has its ties through Sugino, but the entire shape of the game serves a purpose that doesn't directly relate to baseball itself. BNA, on the other hand, keeps its focus on the games, and the more specific elements immediately surrounding them. There's even a baseball fight song that sounds reminiscent of the classic Take Me Out to the Ball Game. And Michiru even says this is the first time since she's become a beast man that she actually feels happy. No matter how you look at it, from the story, themes, or animation, this episode exudes a passion for sports. If it didn't, I don't think the story would have wrapped up the way it does. We see our underbears make it to the championship match, with Michiru back as pitcher after she'd previously had her hands tied by the coach who was trying to help rig the games. Despite this though, it's revealed that everyone else is also in on the fix, while at the same time chaos erupts in the stadium as fans discover their betting money has been stolen. In effect, this exposes corruption at both ends, and seemingly damns baseball's future in the city. But then, in true sports story fashion, Michiru takes the mound and delivers an impassioned speech as she drills the stadium with pitch after pitch, stripping away layers of fraud and double dealings with each throw until only the spirit of baseball remains. Symbolized by Jackie stepping in to catch the pitch and the return of that classic baseball tune. It's enough to restart the game just for the sake of competition, as the Bears pull the game closer and closer in the bottom of the final inning. After all this strife and turnaround, we finally see them lose. Yeah, they cut away to a bit of overarching plot development, only to cut back and see that they came up short by a single run. This is anticlimactic to say the least, but it's what needed to happen. It's all too common to look at the end of a game and only care about whether there's a W or L in the column. But in doing that, you risk dismissing all of the stories of that game or even that season, boiling it down so it's as binary as possible. It's not bad to want to win, competition is key, but what's most important are the lessons and connections we make along the way. Those are the things we'll value long after we step off the field for good. So in losing here, BNA makes a statement about baseball and sports itself, rather than the outcome of a single game. And I like that. As I said in the beginning, my goal was not necessarily to compare and contrast these, as I think I've shown baseball serves a very different purpose in each series. Though one commonality I found funny was how bunting is used. For E-Class, it's a cornerstone of their initial strategy, and works at first, whereas in BNA, it's almost exclusively seen as a means of throwing the game, especially as the other team clues into what you're doing. And then in Doro Hey Doro, it's used by only one person because he happens to be fast, which is not unlike how it's used in the MLB. Either that, or as a deliberate sacrifice to advance a runner. This comparison, though, highlights what I realized as I was writing this script. Even something as seemingly restrictive as a single technique in a game that is already highly special specialized can be used in wildly different ways. The same can be said for tropes or themes in general. Just because two stories have some in common doesn't mean they're being used to deliver the same message, or even that they're being used in the same way. Get creative and don't just judge something by the mere existence of motifs. But those are just my thoughts, and as always, I'd love to hear what you have to say. Been a little starved for sports lately, which led me to re-watching Moneyball, as well as SB Nation's entire Mariners documentary, which I recommend watching both of those even if you're not a fan of sports, they're just good stories. And also because watching those helped motivate me to make this video in the first place. So let me know if you have opinions on either of those, sports in general, or any of the series I covered here. Doesn't have to be baseball related. Those thoughts and any others you may have can be left down below. Thank you so much for watching though, and as always, an especially big thanks goes out to my awesome patrons, Overjoyed Soup, MV Pino, Bjorn, and everyone else whose support helps make videos like these possible. Links to that Patreon if you'd like to join them, my shirts, and everything else are either down below or on the screen right now. Be sure to hit that like button and click that bell for notifications so you know whenever a new video goes up. You can also follow me on Twitter or Twitch. Thanks again for watching, stay awesome, and I'll see you next time.